The Coronation of the Virgin was painted in the last decade of the 15th century by two important Florentine artists, Domenico Ghirlandaio and Sandro Botticelli, for a church in Volterra that belonged to the Camaldolese order of hermit monks. When it was painted, it was only viewed by the monks. The church was not open to the public at that time. The work stayed within that church until the late 19th century, but along the way, there were two volcanic eruptions in the area, and we know from record books that there were damages to the church, including the collapse of the roof. It was moved out of the church and was sold at an auction in Florence, Italy, in 1883. Thereafter, it entered collections in Latvia, Switzerland, and by 1963 was purchased by Mr. Bass. When Oliver and I went over to the museum to look at it, I hadn't seen it for some years and it was up in the gallery. So it was really exciting to see it here in the studio for the first time so we could really get a good look at it. I think my initial impression was the condition of the painting was very poor. There were structural problems as well as aesthetic problems. So the challenge of organizing a treatment and one that would um, be good for the painting was pretty um, daunting. The things that jumped out to me were its structural inconsistencies. So there are large areas of it where you can see inlays, there's, there's deformations, there's distortions and they're playing against the light. So you're seeing reflections that shouldn't be there. It takes your eye away from the image itself. That was my first impression, was those things need to be corrected so that you could see the image as it was intended to be seen. Part of the assessment is separating what treatments happened before, what was original, what was overpaint. Since this painting is from 1492, it already had condition problems from early on, went through many phases of restoration. We could identify at least two or three backings on it that were put on at various times. This is just surface grime. This accumulated over the years. This is an aqueous solution with chelating agents. It's pH balanced. After the testing, we figured the right balance to use. We all pull upon our experience and our expertise to work out the best way to proceed. Some of my colleagues will specialize in the surface. Myself, I'll specialize in the structural side. We're just trying to kind of put as many reversible barriers as we can between what we're doing and the original paintware. So we work together to get the best out of the treatment and the best thing for the painting. This is definitely one of the longer projects that we've worked on in recent years. It's been about seven months from start to finish. There was a huge amount of time just removing old conservation treatment that always takes a lot longer than you expect. Removing the old glue, um, scraping the old wax from the back of the plaster layer takes a lot of time. It's one of those things that can't be rushed. Um, it has to be done manually. There's no quick way about it. So you've got this sort of coarse open weave material and then here you have this really fine linen or muslin, which is then onto the plaster. But the plaster takes the impression of the, of the muslin, so it's very hard to differentiate between the two. Um, it's also a big unknown because you don't know um, the exact makeup of the materials the previous conservators used, um, and you can't test until you actually start removing some of these layers. You know, it's one of those processes that had to be done, had to remove the old material, the old glue, the old lining canvas. So it's just patience and working systematically through the process until it's finished. So a lot of the old fills have sunk um, a little bit, or they're very uneven. They're kind of crudely, crudely filled in the past. So we're just trying to refine those and just trying to level up the surface a little bit. Every step you're thinking about how it's going to work with the next step for this Painting, the lining was really the most important part and getting the dirt off. And the retouching is definitely the finishing touch. When we work on a really old painting like this, we see different campaigns of restoration over the years. And you really feel part of the history of caring for a piece. 
until the middle of the 20th century, conservation was not really a science, and it was often given over to artists or people with secret formulas. Since then, it's really become a science, and uh, it's a different kind of care and a code of ethics that goes along with conservation. So this is probably the first conservation it's had done in the more scientific or um, contemporary way. You really get to know a painting. You work on every inch. So that was, it's been a special pleasure. It's both a relief and a sadness when things leave the studio because you do get attached to them. You, you know, they become your friends and you know a lot about them. Uh, luckily, we work for a lot of museums so that when, when we go to the museums, we see our old friends. <laughs> The Coronation of the Virgin is a very important work, not only to the city of Miami, but to collections across the United States, because it's a rare example of two important Florentine artists collaborating on a work. And now that it has been carefully cleaned and conserved, it is truly a beautiful work of art. We can appreciate the bright colors and the monumentality in ways that was not possible before. I was very fortunate as a child. I grew up in Washington, D.C. and could see the Italian Renaissance paintings at the National Gallery, which is the reason why I became an art historian. But in the city of Miami, we don't have many Renaissance works of art. So I hope that youngsters and adults get to see this and begin to appreciate Renaissance art in a new way.